Welcome to Wisdom Woman Podcast. I believe that is in constant change and growth, not in perfection, that we find happiness. In this podcast, I'm going to be talking with top performance professionals about tools, techniques, new ideas on how to develop your communication skills, use your creative thinking, be a team player, manage your tasks like a pro, be motivated, become an expert on relationships and a problem solver. Everything you need to be five stars in all areas of your life. My intention is to help you develop your skills and find balance between your professional and personal life. My name is Bettina Meyerfluck and I hope I can be your trusted advisor. Hello, you're here today to talk about work-life balance and how challenging it is during this COVID situation. This phrase work-life balance have been business, business for years and the concept is that employees should avoid letting work overtake their lives but with this new around the situation around us is so complicated it's part of the conversation about balance familiar home responsibilities mental health exercise hobbies and career that we're going to discuss today and we have an amazing person with us krista she's a nonprofit professional and she will be sharing some tips uh, around this topic. Krista, welcome and thank you for being here with us tonight, today. <laughs> yeah, it's my pleasure. I know, speaking of work-life balance, what time is it? <laughs> it's 10 a.m. here in Colorado, but we are transmitting to several folks in Brazil, so over there is 2 p.m. How wow. about you? You're and in we're in different time zones. So, and I'll add, thank you so much for having me, Bettina. I feel like I'm like, maybe there are tips or maybe it's just my authentic experience and we want to hear your tips patina and if folks are really tuning in live i want to hear your tips and questions and have a really open conversation because i'm certainly not the expert i'm just on the journey <laughs> yeah we're on a journey of learning how to do those life events so i'm not that good on uh, answering the questions online we are trying to record simultaneously on youtube instagram and facebook at the same time but let's try to do our best, Krista. Yeah, exactly. So tell us a little bit about your experience. Your, you just moved to Florida. Why this decision of moving from another state? And I'm sure that this was based on work-life balance too, wasn't yes. it? Totally. Absolutely. I mean, uh, my story is like many. In March of 2020, everything changed. I went from a, a job that was kind of a dream job where... I was going to be on a plane every week, traveling the country in the West Coast, doing what I love, teaching in real life, <laughs> IRL. And so everything shifted. And I think in the moment, I think many people can relate to this. It was more of like survival mode, like, OK, keep your job, keep your you know family together, stay healthy. But as time went on over the last two years, it, things really shifted for me and um, shifted for my household as well. So work-life balance started to become way more important. I needed to really put more time into doing it because like many, as soon as I started working from home, it was kind of hard to unplug now that I'm here all day and I want to uh, you know, be uh, grateful that I was still employed, which was really happening to me. I was so grateful that I still had a job and that I could still work. I burned myself out very quickly. Um, I knew that so many people around the country and around the world weren't in a situation that I was in where I could work. And I found myself getting just, you know, again, I'm not alone here, burned out by being online and overworking. So for me, I started this kind of personal journey of like, what is work-life balance for me? And it was really looking at being happy at work and not being fully burned out, but also what's happening when I'm not at work and, and where are my uh, goals and, and kind of where's my happiness going to fit into that. So we can talk a little bit about what happened between that moment and why I'm in Florida, but certainly the move was part of this longer term uh, journey that I'm on around true happiness and, and purpose, both at work and not at work. 
Yeah, let me tell you a little a story how we met. Krista and I, we both work with nonprofits and she was doing an amazing work. We decided to start recording podcasts together about some topics that we she normally teach nonprofits. And we felt like, hey, we have the same mission, life mission of helping nonprofits. Why not partnering? And we've been doing a lot of podcasts since then. And I mentioned to her about my program, Happiness Journey, and she decided to join because I was just launching Happiness Journey while she was moving. So it was a perfect fit, I think. So Krista, what, what is work-life balance for you? Yeah, it was a perfect fit for sure, Bettina. And I'm so grateful that we had the opportunity to work together and then also that I'm on this journey with you. So yeah, for me, work-life balance was I got the work part down. I knew that it was critical for my household to you know, keep my job because I love my job. I'm very passionate about helping the nonprofit sector, but also um, like many in a kind of challenging, uncertain economic time, my husband was out of work because he's in the restaurant industry and it was just really important for me to um, continue to work for my own happiness too. Um, so I needed to focus more time uh, on planning what my life outside of work was and where is that balance? Because I feel like I've spent so much of my life so focused on my career goals and, and what are the next career, go career goals and what's going to make me happy in my career that I, I use this opportunity to for really slow down, Bettina, we've had this conversation a lot. I slowed way down. And part of that was, I'm so grateful to have the happiness journey and we can uh, talk more about what that's done for me. But the journey was really um, creating more boundaries. It, the, uh, enabled to, in, it, in order to be able to do that, I needed to create better boundaries at work and not just create them, but I needed to assert them because I wanted to spend more time outside of work on me. Um, and so once I was able to start doing that 20, I'm very proud. I'm very proud of some of those boundaries that I created in 2021 for myself, because then I was able to create space to start working on me. And that's the reason why I was able to, I mean, it was a financial investment to join your program and a time commitment, right? A very personal commitment to do work on me. And both of those things, if you would ask me a year before when I said yes, it would have been no on both of those uh, realities. So first of all, that was like a, a, a really neat moment in itself that I had arrived at a place where I could say yes to you that quickly. Um, and, and I'm really like now I'm on like a whole nother trajectory now that it's 2022 on doing that work because I had some of that baseline work that I had done to basically carve out time for me. <laughs> I agree with you. It's not easy to considering uh, accepting help because sometimes we think we don't need help and having an external help, not just rely on your spouse to exchange ideas because sometimes you have problems at your work and you don't have anybody to talk about and even problems at home. So accepting that someone else outside can help you have a better version of yourself, it's so hard. Every time I needed to do a big leap in my life, I had the help of a coach and I still have right now three coaches helping me out. Me too. <laughs> well, I, I would say I have a therapist too. I've, I maybe have you as a partner coach, um, a coach and a therapist. Um, and I feel like that's been so great for me. These are three things that I did not have um, in 2020 when I started the year. And I noticed such a difference. Like you said, it's because it is investing the time and kind of saying to yourself, I'm worth this, but there is money attached to this. And you have to kind of be in that place where a you've positioned yourself to be able to afford it, but also mentally you see the value of that investment for yourself, which I think was harder for me than just the money. <laughs> and not talking only about money, how much time you had to invest to be able to be part of the Happiness Journey program and implement all the tips and tricks and everything that we did together. Because the Happiness Journey program, it's meant to be done in six weeks, but as an intensive program, you dedicate at least one hour a day, meditating in the morning, creating a routine and doing one exercise a day. But how much time you committed to this program? 
Yeah, I was, I'm in a, a really neat space around kind of this balance of not only looking at my happiness, but truly slowing down and, and uh, not saying yes to too many things because I can overcommit myself. And then, like you said, it's hard to then follow through or find that time for yourself. So I would say at least an hour a day. One of the main uh, life changing moments for me of this program really kicked off when we started meditating. Patina. And I was thinking about it when I woke up this morning. I, my mom always said it's such a good thing. I've had doctors that have said it my whole life. And I always said, I had this like a uh, barrier. I said to myself, it's not for me. I, I like intensity. I can do some yoga and breathe for a little bit, but like, I'd rather, you know, roller skate, which I love doing as well, or do something way more intense. So I had created a mental block for myself and told myself I couldn't meditate and that wasn't good for me. So that act, not only has meditation completely changed my life and now my husband, we, we do a sleeping meditation on Insight Timer that you told me all about every night. And if it's not on, we both are like, wait a minute, we hold each other accountable. So not only is it in my life now and I feel like it will always be, but it was that um, learning moment of me saying, oh, it's not for me. Let me, you know, take it off the table to then going, oh my gosh, well, if meditation is my new thing and I never thought it was, what are the other possibilities that are going to come out of all this, like you said, intense work that we did on really, truly discovering our true happiness? It's, I don't even have all the answers now. It's just a very exciting time to think about what's next. That's so nice. And what exercises do you, did you enjoy more during the program? That's a great question. I feel like I'm, I've always been good at setting goals and having tasks and to-do lists and kind of putting that into my daily life. So while I love the accountability, um, frankly, I teach a lot of that. So while it's nice to have that time for myself, it was more about the, the, the life outside of what I would consider work. Even if you're doing goal setting, you're pu still putting work into yourself. It's really being mindful of daily habits, my morning routine. Um, I think we also, I don't know if we talked about this before, but like comfort and really thinking through and going through those activities and thinking, you know, uh, not only what's comfortable and what do I need today, but I, I love thinking about like my legacy. So it's very like here now, what am I going to do to wake up and be my best self? And then in this quiet space, what's my legacy? Um, and, and I haven't answered that yet, but I'm, I'm working on it because I have that morning and daily healthy routine that I think you really helped refine for me. Yeah, and I think all those exercises, they're meant to be a toolbox for you to use all your life. You don't have to use them all the time, but just grab them whenever that you need to make your life even better. Oh, it's that's why I knew the investment. Not only did I put the time, probably about an hour some days, some of the exercises, like my vision board was way more time because I like found all these cool, you know, pictures and things like that. Um but uh, probably about an hour, but I knew, I knew the investment was going to be, and you were so great at it. And the group, I was also going to say, I was searching for a different network of folks, like you said, kind of outside of work that could relate to this life experience, which I loved. And um, it really, it, the, the, I knew the investment was going to go beyond just the six weeks, because now I have this whole toolkit um, and other colleagues that I can reach out to and you. Um, that is, it's not ending. It's kind of, it's more of like a, a fresh start. It's a, it's a new me that I was really, I was ready for. Yes. And I saw the results of your happiness test. It really increased. That's, that's the best part of it. We normally test people when they start the program, there's an amazing test that's done worldwide. And then we, you did it at the end. You almost hit it 100. That's so impressive how it changed. Well, and I loved that too, because I think sometimes there's like a, a wiring of the past. And this is a lot of what the daily meditations have reminded me of around really staying present and that sometimes we can bring past struggles into our current mood. Look at me talking all meditative, <laughs> um, but it's true. And I was able to identify that maybe in the past I wasn't happy and I kept kind of thinking I wasn't. 
right? Because this was just a way of thinking that I had gotten so used to. And doing this work and doing the tests actually helped me realize that I'm happier than I was thinking I was. So a lot of it is we get stuck in that. And I think I've been, I've been sharing all of my meditation moments at work, actually. So now I'm bringing it back to work and I feel like I'm helping everyone else find balance maybe, or at least being a, an advocate of that. And I love this one. It's um, the past is a memory and the future hasn't happened yet. So it's all about right now. And that's so helpful to me because some things we want to leave in the past, trauma or pain or challenge, stress. Uh, it's, it's that time where I think some of us are having a hard time letting go of that stress that we've had over the last few years and kind of reinventing ourselves or stepping into this new version of ourselves. And that's the reason why I wanted to share and, and talk about this because it's been so personal to me, Bettina, but I feel like what I'm working on is something that I hope can get others excited about the potential for themselves too. I totally agree. And this program was meant to um, help you guys shine your own light. And once you have your light out, the idea is for you to transform, transform others, to shine their light too, with all the tools that you learn. And you become a teacher. Whenever you become a teacher, you really understood what it's meant to be. So if you're teaching yeah. others, that's amazing. That's That's the best part. You I love it. Both. The authentic, the authentic side of it for me. I think I teach at work because I'm a practitioner, and I and I have education and experience and all those kind of like work related qualifications. I think this is an exciting time for me because it's a different role. It's more about really that's some of my goals. Which when we were talking about it, my goals are pretty like. Um, you know, I don't know, non-traditional this year. It's about like really showing up being authentic because I feel good about that when I'm most authentic, I'm my happiest and I attract other authentic folks. So that that's a challenge sometimes in really being vulnerable and authentic. Um, and that's, I think the difference is that I don't feel like this is like my expertise. This is sharing what I am going through to, um, open other conversations for others to share. You mentioned about vibrating high and part of the witchy planner, a, a chapter we have there, it's about the energy scale. What are your tricks and tricks to be, be always on this high scale of energy? Because you're saying you're attracting a lot of nice people yes. around you and this is because you're vibrating high. Yep. What are you doing to vibrate high besides the meditation? Yeah. I've been on, thank you for asking, because it's so fun to even be talking about this. Um, I've been on a real journey since really early 2021. So it's just been about a year to uh, practice self-compassion. And it was a concept that I hadn't really thought about. Uh, and now it's like a new practice, but I, it's a, it's a journey. And so that's where happiness fits in and kind of uh, balance on vibrating high is self-compassion. I think it's very easy, especially in a new and uncertain world where things are kind of, it's hard to plan ahead right now for anybody. I've been on this uh, kind of in this space where uh, if, you know, if I can't really look at self-compassion, then I can't vibrate high. I can be really hard on myself. If anyone else can relate, I was uh, almost exhibiting kind of imposter syndrome uh, <laughs> behavior where I was like, why am I behaving like that? There's no reason for me to be like that, but I can relate to those feelings. So vibrating high is uh, having self-compassion, practicing it, being authentic when I kind of veer off from it, not being hard on myself, but being authentic. And, and really creating those, those boundaries, like I was saying, and asserting them nicely, kindly, you know, professionally when it comes to work, but putting myself first, uh, because then if, then I have space for myself and, and it really is, it's almost, it's taking things off the calendar and things off the list and literally replacing it with time for yourself. And for me, a lot is happening in that space. Um, and I was going to say, one of my tips is like, 
taking a walk at lunch. This has been my new thing since January. Now that we're back to work, it's pretty easy to just sit in front of the computer all day. And I don't vibrate high at all in this environment. This is giving me energy. But so taking little walks, taking breaks. I, I bought a hula hoop. I don't know if I told you this or if you saw it. I bought a hula hoop and I'm not great at it, but um, it's fun. It's playful. It gives me like a few minutes of just like goofing off where I don't have to go so far away from work. Um, but I can have a little bit of fun and get moving and take like a, a little giggle break. So whatever that is for you, um, for me, it's movement and getting outside and giggling. But I think whatever that is for other folks, maybe it's reading or having a more quiet space to yourself. Um, so yeah, building those things into my day has also helped. That's so cool. I'm going to buy a hula hoop for me too. I love the idea. So I'm going to shake her up. Yeah, exactly. Like, what steps have you taken to find balance the last year uh, with such uncertainty times? Yeah. I think in addition to, you know, some of those building it in, I, I actually talk about this at work a lot. I have lunch blocked on my calendar every day. It's something that I did automatically to because I knew I wanted to create better boundaries. I was finding myself in 2020 um, basically eating at my desk every day and being there for over eight hours. It just was so easy to do. And then I started doing like dinner and breakfast and like this, I'm not enjoying my food and this is just not healthy. So I block the time. I move it around for my own scheduling realities. Um, but that just is a reminder to me that I, you know, need to take a break to do something like that. So that's why I've been doing more walks. Um, I actually just, I'm standing, I just bought a standing desk. My husband was the one that's like, just get it. Uh, comfort has been so important because sometimes we can, like you said, get used to just like working at the couch or the dining table. I'm like, this isn't going away for me. So um, if my organization or my company is not going to invest in it, I need to invest in it for myself so that I can maintain and, and continue. Um, and then I think the hardest thing that I'm still kind of putting my finger on is the networking. This is if you work from home, uh, you know that this is challenging sometimes to really network and have that social time. I also recognize that many folks don't have the privilege to work from home and they had to go back to an office and are, you know, have been on site serving the constituents that they need to serve in a much more, I don't know, scary safety reality. So gratitude <laughs> and, you know, being mindful when I need social time to just to build that in as well. But it's really, it's really about gratitude for everything. It's easy to kind of get complainy, but uh, every time I'm like, Ugh, I'm like, you know what? This is a privilege to be able to work like this. Oh, I'm so glad you're able to integrate that. And we have this in the program is the, what I'm grateful for at the end of the day, at least three things to tune your mind. So the end, the night routine is so important as well as the morning routine. Yeah. So end the day with a right high the right vibration, it's essential. So tell me about your biggest accomplishment last year and after this program happiness journey. It's kind of all in, in one. I think you said it in the beginning. Part of this journey was also in our household, kind of figuring out, are we in, you know, COVID happened. It is what it is. Is this, are we, you know, in a position to be successful and accomplish our goals? So my husband and I had to kind of have a real conversation. This is the other part of finding this balance and finding happiness is like you said, the folks in your life and in your household. So one of the things we did was we made the decision. We had a restaurant, um, which during COVID was very, very challenging. And we, he was working all the time. And then, uh, you know, I was there on the weekend. So we were both pretty busy. <laughs> um, and we are very proud that we kept it open as long as we could, but we made the decision to close the restaurant in August last year, which started to kind of put some other things in motion, um, which was so great. We had this like really nice moment where we could start thinking about, okay, well, if the restaurant's closed, what possibilities does that give us? Which resulted in us selling our house in San Diego and moving to Florida to be wow. closer to family. Yeah. Yes, considering really? family, you know, the five areas of your life, you will find balance on all of them, work, friends, community, 
um, your health and your spirituality. I think this, this is huge, isn't it? It was huge. The family piece, not only were we spread so thin and exhausted financially and emotionally, um, and physically, but, uh, you know, the, the challenges that COVID brought made us uh, really miss our families. We had no family on the West Coast and all of our family was on the East side. And then his parents were here in Florida. And it was just, it made so much sense. I will say it was so scary. It was just, you know, you built, I built my career in California and San Diego, and we had built our business there. Um, we had literally, you know, done so much to our home. It was like this beautiful you know, place for us, um, built our community. It was, that was a very, it was the right decision. And I'm very proud in terms of the accomplishment, but it was a very hard decision. And it, I don't think if I hadn't been kind of on this journey of finding better balance and like truly being happy, both at work and not at work, that I would have had the courage to know that that was the right move. So, um, and then we had to like go for it. So the happiness journey was came at the perfect time where we had just finished all of the move. <laughs> and I was in a new space of like, okay, it's over. The stress is over. The, you know, rush is over. How am I going to take my journey really to the next level and start redefining who this kind of new person is on the other side of all that? Yes, it's a never ending journey, but right. at least we walk together part of it. <laughs> right. And what is your biggest growth moment um, that you had? I, whoa, I don't, did I even write that one? Uh -huh. There's so many. <laughs> I really, I really do think it's the investment in myself through the coaching, through the program and 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 being committed to the self-compassion um because it is it was a foreign concept to me although it made sense like i i love supporting others in their self-compassion it wasn't something that i was leading or practicing so it is that is also a journey that is never going to end you're never going to arrive at like an expert at that it's <laughs> something that now it's part of my daily life um, but it was a true growth moment and it still is. I have, you know, it's a, it's kind of a mental uh, practice around uh, being comfortable with yourself and authentic and being confident, but also being um, with a growth, with showing up with a growth mindset too. I totally agree. And how do you think this program helped with your marriage? Hmm. I mean, <laughs> I joke with my friends that it saved it. <laughs> I don't think it's that dramatic. But I said it the other day, we we were as you know, we were achieving some of our kind of very personal career focused goals, but we were going in different directions every day. So it's like you're in this, I'm sure many people can relate. And sometimes you need a season for that, right? You want to be able to be in a relationship no matter what it looks like. Um, that you can support different seasons of coming and going. But for us, we had been going in different directions for so long that we didn't have as much time together to have these really important conversations. So, I mean, it's little things like we have weekends right now, which we hadn't had in many years. We were always on opposite schedules or working together on the weekends, which was really what we were doing the last few years. Um, and we're able to explore and we're in this really neat phase of our life where, um, we're, you know, we're caring for, uh, you know, my in-laws, but we're also able to kind of dream a different, uh, vision. We can kind of restart. Uh, and that, I don't think every marriage, I think every marriage should have that, but I don't think every marriage, it's, it takes courage to do that too. Not just physically move yourself and start over, but to do it with someone else um, and both get on the same page, it's really opened up our, our communication. So what, whether it's the marriage or a, a work relationship or any relationship, I highly recommend doing that hard work and having those critical conversations. 
And you said your husband didn't meditate before also. No. Something you started together with a program and now well, it's like a thing you do together. It's a thing. Yeah, every night. I'm like, the, I was so tired last night and I was going to bed. He's like, don't forget the meditation. <laughs> so I mean, whatever that is. Yeah, it was just it, whether you use the app or you put some, you know, music on some nights, we'll just put some ocean waves um, that for so many nights of stress, going to bed, not knowing what the next day was going to bring. And I know folks can still relate to that. Um, the, the meditation has really reminded us that a abundance and gratitude, but B you can't do it the next day unless you have a good night's sleep. It's so critical to being able to do everything else is sleeping well. So it ends your day with gratitude, but it really, I look at it as like, I'm going to get such a better start to tomorrow too. And have you changed anything in relation to fuel your body and eating healthier? Oh yeah. I, I, like I was saying, some of the best exercises in the program were, you know, just accountability to thinking about uh, my morning routines and how I've been eating. Um, so, I mean, it's always the, one of those things that like drink more water, but I mean, I just saw a, a post from, a, someone that I follow on Instagram right before we got on and she just did a, such a cute, like reminder about drinking water. And I was like, oh yeah, let me go refill my water. So these little things that we know, it's more about the discipline to do them. So, and I'm like, I, it may not be for everyone, but I'm on a little, like, I'm not doing carbs and cheese right now, Bettina, but that's just for me. Um, I'm not saying that that's for everyone, but I've also learned through doing this work that I'm way more aware of my body's sensitivities. And so it's, it's just, I don't know, it's empowering, I think, to have more space to say, is, is, did I just have that? And that's not making me feel as good. Let me fuel with what I know is making me feel good. I think you mentioned the most important word is self-awareness. And this is one of the intention of the program, bring you self-awareness because once you're aware of what you need, it's just a matter of doing it. And it's so nice to have a group to do together. So this happiness journey program is intended to be done with a group. The maximum people attending to the group is 12. So check it out if there is some spots available in the next round. We stay together for two months working in our improvements and sharing our wins because sharing and celebrating our wins is huge too. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. Find a group or an accountability buddy. I mean, do this program and then find other people within your life to be your, your accountability partners too, if that works for you. Um, because it really, it really does. I think if that's a, exactly it, you might think it's a silly thing to celebrate, but that's exactly what gets you excited about doing the next thing. And I, I look at days a little different. I find myself mentally creeping. Like yesterday, I, I found myself saying, I'm so bored. And Because <laughs> I stayed home all day. I did all my things. I did my yoga in the morning. And I did my morning routine. And I ate all the right foods. And I did my hula hoop. And then I took my bike ride. But I just felt bored. Like I had done everything that was like my good routine. But I felt bored. And then I had to do that mental work of going, are you bored? <laughs> are you bored? <laughs> You know, saying that you're bored now, you're 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 chill. You had a nice chill Monday. You accomplished so much at work. You you did your you got all your taxes to your CPA. I mean, you go through the list, and you go, you're not. I'm not bored. So don't let that mind kind of creep into you um, to tell you something different. I think. I think that's the other thing with the meditation. It becomes something that I can pull out for myself now all day long when I have those moments. Uh, you mentioned something about the dream board and it was such a special moment for me doing my own dream board because I like to walk the talk. So if I'm teaching everything that I'm teaching, I'm practicing myself. I spent five hours on my dream board. <laughs> I'm not surprised. It was so nice. And I invited yeah. a friend to come over. We did it like a, a, an afternoon together. It was That's so fun. nice to do it together. That's why we recommend to leave this exercise for a Friday so you can enjoy the whole weekend doing your dream board. How was the process of creating your dream board? 
Yeah, I think there's so many different ways that you can do it. In the past, I think old school, I'm like, get all the magazines out and, you know, do it with paper. But I just, I'm not in a living situation where I have paper and things like that. It's kind of temporary. And I'm like, okay, I have to think of a creative way to do this that's going to be just as, um, you know, inspiring. And uh, I don't know what that is, like imaginative. So, uh, it was, it was getting myself there first where I just said, you know, I'm going to, I did a PowerPoint. It was something that was comfortable for me. I just had one screen and I started, it was a really nice process for me, which I appreciate. It probably was a couple hours. And then I probably went back and added to it a few times too, but it gave me this opportunity to kind of like search for images instead of seeing things and cutting it out it, my process. Cause I was like, how do I do this? Um, was, okay, well, think of things that make you happy, right? Through all the other exercises that we did in the program too. And so it was kind of this extra, it was like this extra step of I had to like think of something and then what's a symbol to represent that or what's, you know, a, an image or a, a picture. So what happened for me is I, I thought bigger in my vision and dream board. Um, it wasn't, small dreams and visions like and it wasn't specific this is the other thing i was sharing with someone the other day i'm like usually i'm very very specific with my goals and dreams and this year it's like i don't know um i i don't i think i had just like a picture of a, a beach or something like that and it's a bigger it's a bigger idea of spending more time at the beach than okay you know go to the beach you know every saturday um, so, and you can be at the beach in your bed with the ocean waves, right? It's a little more, I don't know, it's a larger vision and it gives me more space for me to ebb and flow with some of my big visions because I haven't really nailed down some of them. I'm really in kind of like this open space, which is a little, it's a little wild for past Krista, <laughs> that like things a little clear. So it, that was one way I could do it, but I'm sure someone would come up with like three or four different ways that they can have a real, real fun time creating a vision board. I agree with you. I did something similar. I grabbed my uh, goals of the year. I went one by one and then I researched it on Google. What can represent this goal? Yeah. And then Google brings me so many images. Then I said, oh, I want that too. I want that too. I started printing out everything. Wow. And then I put together my dream board. And now it's here close to my office. Every time I, I pass by, I say, oh my gosh, I really want that. <laughs> Let me go. Yeah. It <laughs> helps. Like any goal setting, um, it really does help. And I, I think I also appreciated that you know, while I was trying to slow down and not take on too much, but also commit to the process, I just felt like you did such a great job of following up with us as a group, but also one on one. And, and it's that tailored kind of one on one support through the six weeks that I just I really appreciate Bettina. And I know that everyone else can say the same thing because I could feel it in the in the group. You know, things happen. Six weeks is a hard thing to commit to sometimes. Um, but what you're doing is you're committing to yourself for six weeks, not like being an A student, whatever that, you know, version of your old school self is. So, so committing yourself in that six weeks, um, I think is so important. And yeah, I just, I really appreciate how you approached being the facilitator in that as well. Yes, we're aiming to be minus and then afterwards sharpen everything to get to A+. <laughs> So doing 80%, it's good enough. And then just keep working on it. It's a journey that never ends. <laughs> right. I think that's it. I think in the past, I would have wanted to like do everything, but I might not have been present in what I was doing. Right. I would want to check everything off. And so this was a real true deep process for me because I had to coach myself to say, if you're not really there and ready, like go meditate, go for a walk, because that's the point of this program is to kind of shift some of those thinking, but also uh, habits. So that's the part that I got, I think the most dramatic uh, change and, and progress out of, because I know I can go back and like refine the activities as I continue to build this life of happiness for myself. 
Thank you for being an inspiring model for us, Krista, and to being part of the happiness journey. I hope you come back as a helper in our group, and um, then we will share more experiences around. If you want to learn more about happiness journey, just go to our website, www.witty.tech, and there is a full page explaining how happiness journey works. You can schedule a, a full session with me to see if we are a best match or not, but I'll be more than happy to have you in the group. And I wish you can be as happy as Krista she is now <laughs> and bring this joy to your marriage, to your relationship, to your life, if possible. Thank you, Krista. I love having you around. Thanks, Bettina. Thank you for listening to Wisdom Woman Podcast. To hear past and future episodes, please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast channel. We appreciate your reviews. To give us suggestions for future show topics, please write to us at podcast at witty.tech. If you're interested in having me as your trusted advisor, schedule a strategic coaching session on my website, www.witty.tech.